Dragon Radio. I'm your host, ML Roostrack. I'm here with my special guest and wonderful friend, Sherry Chapman. Welcome. Hi, Melissa. How are you? Good. Now, we have, with Dove and Dragon, we have at least four books on, off the top of my head, right? From you. Yes. So, we started with um, Chapter Part. That's the movie name, which. <laughs> Wild Passion. Yeah, see, I know the film names off the top of my head. You know <laughs> the book names off the top of your head, so we're going to have fun. So we have that yeah, one this out. this is we, so exciting. <laughs> I, I know. We're in a wonderful time with Dove and Dragon and we Chalk Films right now. It's so great. But we can't go into film stuff, unfortunately. Um, okay. <laughs> but we have... Wild Passions out, and then we just released Chief's Spirit Bear. Bear. Mm-hmm. You have go ahead and tell us a little bit about that one. Okay, um, Chief Spirit Bear is kind of a short story. Um, I wrote the first two series, Wild Passion and Passions of the Heart, and then I did a little uh, short story about Chief Wild Bear or <laughs> Spirit Bear. Geez. And um, it's kind of about his rise to power, um, you know, how he got to be a chief so young, um, what happened to make him so uh, fearful, um, and just different stories about what happened to him while he was growing up and how it uh, formed the man that he is today. Awesome. See, we have so many books that I can't possibly remember the synopsis for every single one of them. Unfortunately, my memory is good. It's not that good. Well, yeah, that's a lot of books. <laughs> <laughs> um, so besides that one, we have Eyes With No Soul out. So what is that one? Yes. Eyes With No Soul is a young adult. It's a, it's a shorter story. It's not super long, but it's an easy read, and it's about a psychic girl who is a high schooler. And one day she she hasn't really had, like, big psychic episodes. She kind of can tell what's going on with her friends without them telling her. But when they go to the mall, and it's actually set in Springfield, Missouri, which is my, my home range, and um, she runs into a man, and she can tell that he's murdered somebody. And so he actually takes a great interest in her, and later she finds out she looks exactly, well, not exactly, but almost exactly like his murder victim. And so he starts stalking her, but she doesn't have any proof to make anyone believe her. So it's kind of a story of is he going to get her or is she going to escape? Is she going to find people to um, help her? That kind of a story. Wonderful. I can't, see, we have... Okay, so we have that one. So what else are you working on right now? I'm working on a story called, um, let me think, (laughs) A Killer Revisited. And it is about a man um, that does cloning, and he's working in a secret lab, and he has a successful clone. And um, they've noticed that the clones don't sink on their own. They just are kind of like machines, and they can't, Um, operate without help. So they have the idea to take a death row inmate's soul and and somehow transfer it into the clone. So they have another scientist that figured out a way to do this. And so um, this clone comes to life with a death row inmate's soul, and they thought that the soul wouldn't remember um, his former life and just have that innate ability to just kill like a super soldier and he starts to remember his past life and he becomes very angry that he was a part of an experiment without permission and he starts 
retaliating against the people who were involved with the experiment. Wonderful, because nothing ever goes wrong when you have transferring of human memory into a robot, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so it's just a, it, it's a real fun story, and, and it's kind of focused in on um, there's a female detective. She hasn't been a detective for that long, but she's really made her place, but this is a little over her head with her experience. So um, it's kind of her story and trying to figure out, and this clone um, soldier is reaching out to her, and at first, they think that he's toying with them like, ha, 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 you can't catch me, but that's not what he's doing. He's trying to alert them to the um, immoral experiments the military is doing, and so um, he's just trying to alert people outside of the military about what's going on. And so it's kind of a detective story with a, a thriller um, fantasy edge. Of course. So when can I expect to have this one at least on my desk? Well, I'm, I uh, am working on getting uh, the disk that it was on with my newest updates was corrupted. So I bought a program, and I have to um, go through that and get it back up and running. But hopefully within a couple of months, it should be ready. I have to have it edited too. So hopefully we can get all that going. I've had part of it edited, and so he's kind of helped me know what to add where, what questions the readers would have from a different perspective, and you need to add this part and that. But um, it's coming together very nicely. I'm very excited about this story. Awesome. And Eric's doing your editing, right? Yes, Eric Meyer. I, I like going, giving a shout-out when we can because w authors without editors are great, but editors are really the background of our authors. I will tell you, I do want to shout out to him. He has really helped me to become better. Um, he's helped me have um, know what common mistakes I make. He helps me develop the characters more. He helps me learn about the process more than what I knew. He's very knowledgeable, highly intelligent, and you know he he's just. I, I can't praise him high enough. Exactly. And he's also one of our Dove and Dragon authors as well. So we can yes, expect to see I'm excited great. to have him. <laughs> yeah, I'll be working on his cover very shortly. I have to get the inspiration behind that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> so where are all of your ideas coming from right now? Well, I, you know, I don't know. They just pop in my head. I don't really know where they come from sometimes. Um, for example, I started um, a story even about the coronavirus. It's, um, I just, it's a little thing that popped in my head. And so I haven't worked on it that much. It's on that same corrupted disc, but I've got to recover all that. But it, it's about a, a girl that um, develops powers from the first coronavirus vaccine that um, went wrong. So I'm developing that idea more, but um, her power, and, and it's corrupted her personality. So she's become a vindictive, negative person. And so I'm developing that. Um, and, she, you know, her powers are more like shielding, and she's got, like, um, electricity that can kind of, you know, open doors and do different things. So um, it just, I'll just be hearing about something and an idea will spark to life in my mind and I, you know, I, I just write it down real quick so I don't forget about it. Of course, I think that's what we all do, even wake up in the middle of the night because we had an awesome dream. And we yes. Go from there. It's like, oh, this is an awesome dream. It will make a wonderful story if I can figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. And um, I have some other ideas if, if we have time I can talk about. Or if oh, you have oh right else. ahead. We have all the time that we need. Okay. Well, um, another story that um, is um, coming out soon. It's a short story. I, I want to develop it longer. It's Predatory Evil. Mm -hmm. And that is about um, these serpents kind of come out of the earth or demon snaky things with um, yellow eyes with no pupil and they just 
suck the life out of everything, but they have a personality. They're very evil and sinister, and they like to um, invoke fear before they attack. So, um, you know, they play with their prey, in, in other words. So um, I've had really good feedback on people who have read that story. They're like, you wrote that? Because I'm typically a, a nice person that cares about others, and then my story is not very nice. <laughs> I know. So, that's what we do, right? Because we start off Yes. With, we're such nice people, big hearts, <laughs> loving, caring, and they would come up with the story that's, this one has to die. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in the most awful way. And so, like, um, anyway, it's it's a lot of death and destruction, and they have to figure out how to contain them because it's, um, not only do they kill the people, but, like, the grass is dead, the trees are dead. Everything that they pass through, they completely suck all the energy and life out of. So um, they call in the special forces, and they have to figure it out. And they find a way to contain them, but they can't kill them. So it's it's left where I could write a lot more if I wanted to. Well, that's what we do, though. We start off with an idea. <laughs> we plan on a short story, and by the time we get done, it's 400 pages. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and then I've also got a, a story about a girl that... Um, it's uh, the other side of privilege. It's about it's a Cinderella story, and so it's about a girl who gets trafficked when she visits um, Disney World, mm-hmm. and she's tricked into the bathroom. And, well, she's in the bathroom, and she's tricked to try on a Cinderella dress. She's obsessed with Cinderella, and um, she gets stolen and and taught how to be a slave, basically cook in the kitchen and do a bunch of chores, and she's um, it's abused, and so she gets sold into a family, and it's just kind of a rags to riches type of a story. And so I've I've got more work to do on that one too, but that one's fun to write, and it's kind of a darker story too, <laughs> but it has a happy ending. See, okay, this is what people don't understand. The authors that write, with there's two kinds of authors in the fantasy fiction. You have the authors that are really sweet and innocent and write <laughs> dark horror and kill this one, and but they have happy <laughs> endings. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or, or you have the ones that start out really nice. It has a little bit of darkness to it, but it's really nice happy endings at the end because they're made for kids. <laughs> Right, yes, yes. Most of mine are not kids' stories, but I do have several um, ideas for, like, young adult. They like mm-hmm. that supernatural yeah. aspect and things like that. So I, I'm a teacher. I'm retiring this year, but I, I know a lot about what kids like, so that seems to be an interest of mine, too. Right. We go with what, where our passion lies or what we know. Right. I work with kids. I work... I have a teenage daughter who is also my yes. editor. So all my stories are geared toward normal teenagers and young Good. adults, you know. So it's not mm-hmm. going to be too dark, but at the same time there's dark elements or undertones because what do our kids like? My daughter came upstairs. <laughs> You've talked to Shy a few times. Yes. <laughs> She she's a wonderful wonderful daughter. I love her, but she's giving me the four one one on a video game online with their names. Uh, yeah, we're talking about Undertales. She's so she's giving me all the characters' names, and then she's making up stories to go with it. Oh, that that's awesome! So dark. No, you don't understand. Oh. Her stories are so dark. Stephen King would blush. Oh, my word. That's crazy. Shy? Shy. Wow. I wouldn't have seen that one coming. She is the most bubbly personality ever. (laughs) Yes, she's very fun and easygoing. And, yeah, that gives me goosebumps. That's awesome. (laughs) It's so funny because I'm like, 
uh, my daughter's scaring me with her story. <laughs> <laughs> well, she got a good imagination from her mama. Very true. I mean, it's fun <laughs> to work with her kids because we bounce ideas off. But yes, I, try to I love up. it. I try to keep up with what she's doing. She keeps up with what I'm doing. But at the same time, I'm like, uh, shouldn't you be doing your schoolwork? Because uh, you're scaring me now. <laughs> yeah, I'm like her, though. It's much better to write fun things than it is to do the things you don't want to do. But sometimes you need that. You need that break. And I'm, I'm really... I'm struggling because I have all of my stuff on that disc and I've got to get it off because for my own mind, I have to start writing again. I, I need it. And I, so I, know. I, I started back up, putting all my backup files on Google docs. Yes. Just, just because everything keeps getting misplaced on my PC and we, okay. My, she, Sherry's one of my assistants. We joke joke about this all the time. My computer's name is Jarvis. Jarvis <laughs> has <laughs> is very temperamental. When I'm not, if I'm in my room, and he has, he's an AI, so he actually has a program that he is a personal assistant on my computer. But he's very temperamental, and he misplaces my files to no end. <laughs> I will find them like three days later, but it's funny. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> yes, I started to um, back up mine on Google also, but I didn't finish. And I've got some stuff on there, but it's just needed to be updated. I might have written 10,000 more words on something, and I, it's just depressing. So I, I bought a program, and I'm hoping it'll work. I just need to... It, it takes six hours to find all the deleted files and then six hours to kind of check mark all the ones because you don't know what ones you want. Right. <laughs> Is this crazy? But I'll get it done. Yeah, we per- we're we procrastinating a lot right now because we're like, oh, we have all the time in the world to do stuff. <laughs> yes. But I'm excited to get back to it. And then and then we're writing the journal that we're doing. It's kind of fun, too. I mean, dark, uh, We but will be fun. publishing this eventually. I just don't know when. Right. Because we're doing, okay, there's three of us working on this journal. Me, Sherry, and Tina Marine. It's going from March, sometime in March, during the pandemic, until whenever we actually stop it. But Mm -hmm. it gets inside our our heads. It's three different age groups, three different points of view, and three different areas in the country. Yeah. So, I mean, you get all this where our mind is during everything. Yeah, it's really a neat... uh, I really like the idea that that we had to do that, Tina developed that idea, and then we all decided that was a great idea. But um, I do like that because, you know, each part of the country was kind of hit at different times, and it's just uh, it's interesting to see how it affects everything that goes hand-in-hand with that part of that country. Yeah, it's it's not a daily. There's times that it is daily, and then there's gaps. So it's not like it's every day of the pandemic. There's days in there that we're not even talking pandemic. It could be something wonderful that happened in our lives that day. Mm-hmm. So there's happy stuff in there in the mix of all this gloom and darkness and whatnot. Yes, yes. And I, I love it because it helps us get to know one another, too, while we're writing it. It's so cool. I love it. it it's just brought us together a lot more as friends as authors, as Mm -hmm. sisters, as everything. Yes, yes, I agree. (laughs) Uh, I mean, we can sit and then we can talk for hours on end, but to get inside someone's head because you're technically reading their journal. Now you're intimately with them. It's not just, oh, they're telling me. No, you're intimately inside their head at that point. 
So it's a wonderful experience. Yeah, in fact, um, Tina wrote something the other day, and I messaged her, and I just asked, you know, hey, are you okay? And she's like, oh, I forgot that journal is not private. <laughs> it just made me laugh because I'm like, yeah, no, it's it's not. I mean, it is, but it isn't yeah, <laughs> for us. <laughs> we'll actually go through it at a later time and take out the stuff that is not appropriate right. for a general audience. So it's not going to be like, oh, you guys are talking about X, Y, and Z. Is this even something that you want people to know about. Right, exactly. We'll temper it down so general audience can read it. Mm Mm-hmm, yes. Because I I love Tina, but her mind goes into directions sometimes, and I'm like, okay. (laughs) (laughs) I think we all have moments of you know, worry. <laughs> uh, well, it's not just a worry. I, um, the three of us talk on messengers and on Skype and stuff like this all the time. It's like, um, okay, so if I need to have a really interesting love scene in a book, I know who to call. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. uh. Yep, that's true. <laughs> She's very good at that. Yes. So, yeah, when we say we have to take stuff out, if you read Tina's books, you would understand why we need to take some of this stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> uh. But yeah, she's a wonderful lady. I love you all. I'm so glad to be a part of such a family. I, I mean, we've made it a family. It's a family. You know, you just care and you love and you, you – it's neat to have that closeness with people who were not born into your family but have become family. So exactly. I'm very happy to be part of this company, part of the, the program, part of the company. You know, I said that already, yeah. but um, – I just am excited about my future with it, and retiring from teaching has been a, I mean, I, I'm ready for it, but it's been a struggle, so I have something yeah, to look forward to with this company. Been, yeah, this year should have been your, woohoo, I'm retiring, these are my kids, <laughs> have all this fun time with my kids. Yes. You have so many things planned with them this year, I know, because we talked off and on, and then everything hit. And we're homeschooling our kids, and nothing is coming out the way we planned. No, it's just crazy. It's like we're living in one of our stories. It's just, it's unbelievable how something in your head just seems to have come to life for Stephen King or someone. <laughs> Maybe shy. <laughs> Stop it, shy. <laughs> I know. We. Shy has a thing. It's a Stephen King book, and someone's playing Jumanji in it. Yes, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> and she's like, "Can we just stop both right now? Like, can we close the book, put the book back on the shelf, stop Jumanji, <laughs> put that like six feet in the ground, and go back to normal at this point?" <laughs> yes. Yes, let's do. <laughs> uh, I'm ready. I'm ready for normal. So am I. I mean, I was talking to um, our um, rancid car the other day about sports. I'm like, can we, like, go back to normal sports games? Like, I don't right. care about, about going to the stadiums. I'll watch them on TV, but can we have sports just on TV? Is that even an I agree. Yeah, I mean, one of the things about uh, teaching retirement I really look forward to is I told my daughter, Sydney, who plays volleyball for college, now I can come to your games more because I won't be as tired after work and then get home at midnight and still have to do my dog chores since I have a, a kennel. Um, but now I can, you know, I, I won't be so pressed. But now with this <laughs> COVID, I'm hoping she gets to play sports in the fall. I know. It's like, can we just close the stadiums, allow the teams to play, 
and just have it on TV. There we go. There's the solution. It's yes, <laughs> for sure. I, I'm just. I so think we need that. Yeah, I'm just so tired of watching old games that I already know the outcomes to. And I'm like, it's not fun anymore. Right. Yes. So we have to pick up a good book from Dev and Dragon instead. <laughs> exactly. And here's the thing. I, I've said this a couple of times already. Right now during this pandemic, if you get a hold of one of Dev and Dragon authors, we're giving away ebooks. Who does that? We're telling them right. to inside and read. Yes. And um, if, if you want to know more about Passion, the Passion series. Um, I don't think I talked too much about. I talked about Chief Spirit Bear, but that is a, a romance. But I don't go deeply into love scenes. They, there's love scenes, and they, they're not explicit love scenes, but you can tell what's going on if that makes sense. But it's a lot of action and adventure, and a, a Sioux war chief um, saves a white girl back in the 1800s, and it's kind of. Uh, a cultural about their cultural life, um, adjusting one culture to another for Caitlin. And so if you're interested in that, that's what the Passion Series is about. So um, that could be one of the free books you get. Exactly. Just get a hold of our authors. We're here. I mean, there's like 13, 14 authors within Dev and Dragon right now. Um, the website, I have a couple of them I have to put on there because they are, are new when we just got the books out. So bear with me. Um, but, yeah, just reach out. Hey, what books do you have? You can get a hold of, if you go on Instagram, most of them are there under ML Roostchuk, um Instagram page because I'm using that for all the uh, Dove and Dragon authors right now. But most of the books are there, and if you see something that's a Dove and Dragon book, reach out to me. If you want to reach out to the author themselves, they're all on Instagram because it's mandatory. <laughs> I made something mandatory within the company. <laughs> <laughs> Which reminds me I need to update my Instagram. <laughs> I'm on there, but I uh, need to probably look at it again. Yeah, I just, okay, this is so great during pandemic because I learned Instagram the first week everything was shut down. I've had Instagram mm -hmm. for a couple years, okay? Seriously. Okay. Like 2017, I got this Instagram page. Had nothing on it. Had like one follower. And I just learned how to do it. Well, I need to. So I may ask you some questions. <laughs> My daughters are on it too. They love Instagram, but I yeah, need to I, learn I, more. Yeah, I, I was like, I took the day or a week because we're watching, let's say, Shy's birthday week. We watch the entire Marvel Universe. So while we're nice. watching the entire, entire Marvel Universe, this is after watching the entire Marvel Universe for Valentine's Day and for Christmas. Okay, so, <laughs> so. <laughs> so I'm pretty much marveled out by her birthday, but I watch it anyway just because that's what the baby wants to do. Yes. So I'm sitting there watching Marvel and learning Instagram. So. Well, that's a great thing to do. Yeah. I'm pairing <laughs> with what I'm learning. so. Yeah. Okay. Well, great. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. So before we go, where can uh -huh. all the listeners find you? Well, I do have a website. It's at wix.com, Sherry Chapman. It might be under also Prayer Paw Puppies. I think it's Prayer Paw Puppies. I'll have to hang on and I'll go look exactly because I'm in my bedroom so the dogs wouldn't bark. Let's see here. I'm also on Facebook. I have a uh, Sherry Branson Chapman as my normal page, but I also have author Sherry Chapman. Um, those are where I'm commonly 
Oh yeah, we can. You can probably reach out quicker on Facebook to us than any other um, social media thing. Seriously. Yeah, yeah, and then I'm also on, of course, Devon Dragon. Um, and I'm trying to find my. I don't have it up, so my author website. Okay. I'm also on um, Amazon, and hopefully I'm on Barnes & Noble at least with... Um, all with, Dove and Dragons um, are on Amazon and Barnes and & Nobles. All eBooks yes. for, for Dove and & Dragon are on Kobo um, 24... Let's see here. I don't even know all the websites. I really don't. I should. Okay, and I found my um, my homepage. It's prayerpawpuppies.wixsite.com slash author Sherry Chapman. So I think if you do like a search Wix site author Sherry Chapman, it should pop up. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Just if you Google Sherry Chapman, most of her stuff pops up on Google. Seriously. Yes. That that is the best way to find all of our authors, like really, really quickly. So. Yes, that um, I'm excited. I I just can't wait to get the writing career going again and just um, pop out some new books. That'll be exciting. And uh, some of our books are becoming hardcover also with uh, Barnes and Noble, and that's an exciting adventure that I think is great for the company and our authors. Yes, all new books that come out through Dove and Dragon come out on hardcover through Barnes and Noble's per- first within three m- with the ebook. Okay, ebook and hardcover come out at the same time, and about three months later is when the paperback comes out. That is only for yeah. new releases. Now, re-releases. If one of my authors come and say hey, I published this book with another company. I would like to have it available in hardcover. We also do that as well, but it's an immediate release. So, Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Mm-hmm. They are coming. So, for all, um, Could you repeat that one more time? The, for, what's coming? Okay. All new releases come in hardcover. When we announce it, there's a three-month waiting period. It okay. comes out with the e- uh, yeah the ebook and the hardcover come out at the same time. Then, three months after the hardcover comes out, the paperback version is okay. Available. Okay, yeah, that's awesome. And um, are they also available on Amazon or just Barnes and Noble? All. Hardcover is only available on Barnes and Nobles. Okay. Yeah, that is awesome. So that is exciting to getting our books hardcover. What a great yeah. thing. Now we also are very shortly, and I'm working on this. It's a slow process for me. We did get approved to sell on Walmart.com and Target.com. So all books, both ebook and paperback hardcovers whatever will be coming to walmart.com very shortly just watch for updates because it's not there yet great yahoo i'm glad about that so that's everything that's going on so sherry thank you so much for joining me today thank you for having me and Everyone out there, happy reading. Yes, stay safe and read Dove and Dragon. <laughs>